Hello, my darlings. I spent three hours writing this Demon Slayer fanfiction despite knowing no one will watch it. So, if you do consider watching it, hey, please watch it twice. If only 100 people decide to watch this and they watch it twice, hey, that will be 200 views instead of just 100. I'd greatly appreciate it. Um, why Zenitsu? I don't know why. I just had this story in my head all of a sudden, like one one day last week, and ever since then it didn't leave my head. I, I, I had to write it. It's like the opposite of a writer's block. Well, technically I did have a writer's block because I know for a fact that this video won't get a lot of views. And uh, I could have wasted my time writing something that would get better views, like a Bakugo story. Okay, okay. I know, Zui, don't push too much blame on your viewers. I mean, I can, since nobody's going to watch this video, am I right? Unless you prove me wrong, of course. Please prove me wrong, I would greatly appreciate that. Because of that, I would like to remind you to watch this video until the end, like or dislike, comment something down below, why not post how your day was or your favorite part of the video down below. And uh, yeah, this is the best way how you can indirectly support me. This puts me better in the YouTube algorithm, which is very important. So more of the people watch my stuff, because it gets more recommended. Lastly, if you want to support me more directly, I have a Patreon and a merch store down in the description. I would greatly appreciate any help you can give me, especially since I have a gacha addiction. I really want Ning One and Kiki. Like, holy shit, Jesus fucking Christ, Genshin Impact is like such an addictive game to me. Um, but yeah, I hope you enjoy the story. I've wrote it for three hours. Please don't make me have wasted my time. Okay, that was a long intro. Let's get right into it. The mission sounded surprisingly simple, which gave him even more anxiety than he expected. He wasn't even sure what he was afraid of. The possibility of it being a demon, or the fact that it actually might not be one. What he did know was that he hated the fact that he had to keep an eye on a graveyard, of all things. While Tanjiro and Inosuke were busy sleeping off injuries they received, Zenitsu had been tasked with a recon mission, with the possibility of it turning into a hunt. Over the past couple of weeks, bodies had been vanishing in various graveyards, never more than five, over a cycle of four nights. This wouldn't have concerned the Slayer Corps if it hadn't been for a haphazardly eaten body parts being discovered at two locations. While, yes, this could still be a cannibal or particularly gross grave robber, the mere chance of it being a demon meant a Slayer had to be on the case to prevent any further tragedy. He had been given a map with possible next targets of the perpetrator, during the day, he nervously scouted the area of the presumed next target of the grave robbers. It was a somewhat small graveyard. It even had a few lamps here and there that the gardener would light before night would fall. And the friendly graveyard keeper even seemed to have waited for him. An elderly man with quite a few muscles. He informed him that on a tree that stood in the middle of the burial grounds, he would have a great vantage point to observe, him going as far as thanking him and hitting him on the back reassuringly. Hours later, he yawned. The tree was surprisingly big, and on a particularly large branch he had found just the right resting spot. It wasn't actually too bad. Despite his surroundings, the tree gave him a good enough view of not only the cemetery, but also the inviting-looking village next to it. Maybe closing his eyes for just one moment wouldn't hurt. Which was a mistake. As soon after night fell, and he was quietly snoring. While asleep, he wasn't able to spot a white figure approaching the graveyard's gates. They sniffed the air, before locking eyes on the sleeping demon slayer. For a moment they stood there, 
thinking. But then the promise from the graves became too beckoning. And with a salivating mouth, the figure approached the many grave markers. The figure had just begun digging with their bare hands for the soft soil when a small bird fluttered towards the figure. I tweeted loud and aggressively. With their slender arms, the figure swiped at the animal until the bird finally let them alone. And so they continued digging, not noticing the light footsteps approaching from behind. And just when the stench of rotting flesh hit the figure's nose, the noise of a blade leaving its sheath caught their attention. The boy from the tree, with a drawn blade, and the little bird on his shoulder stood there. Despite his confident posture, he was breathing heavily through his mouth, a clear sign of a beginning panic attack. The figure's eyes pierced the boy's heart and soul, and through a moment of absolute tension, the figure realized. And with a devious grin it went on all fours, before quickly scuttling towards the slayer like a spider while shrieking. Zenitsu's body froze, so it was a demon after all, before succumbing to his fear and passing out. Zenitsu awoke with a loud groan, the morning sun uncomfortably shining on his face. And he groaned once again, his back hurt. And this bed was quite uncomfortable and hard, at least he had a pillow. Wait. His eyes shot open and he quickly jolted up, looking around his heart beating so fast it almost jumped out of his chest. He quickly analyzed. He was in a cave, lying on a bamboo roll. The sun had awoken him, shining on his body, and a thin blanket had been on him. The next thing he noticed was that his sword was missing. He was defenseless. Wait. What happened last night? Remembering the figure, a grave feeling settled in his gut. You're awake, spoke a soft voice coming from the cave's darkness. Uh, yeah, yeah. Did, did, did you save me f f from the demon? He stuttered nervously. The voice chuckled. <laughs> you could say that. His quivering mouth moved up into a smile, and he gasped. A fair maiden saving the brave slayer, he squealed like a child. Marry me! We can tell the story our children! Silence followed. I... What? said the voice. Quickly realizing his faux pas, he apologized. And when his savior didn't reply, he simply sighed in relief and then took a deep breath, not noticing the faint smell of spoiled eggs all around him. He looked back into the cave. Zenitsu could faintly make out the outline of a person. Then he remembered. Wait, how did you save me from the demon? With a somber tone, the voice replied, I am a slayer. Just like you. Great! He shouted. Now I don't have to hunt that thing all on my own. He looked outside the cave. It appeared to be on a small mountain next to the village. You have a great viewpoint of the village and cemetery here. And suddenly it dawned on him. His heartbeat increased once more, but he could keep his thoughts with him. Say, why don't you come out so I can see your face? 
silence. Before he would fall into an outright panic, he needed to be 100% sure. Not to mention, even if his assumption was correct, they haven't hurt him just yet. They just dragged them over here. At least let me see you, he said with a nervous undertone. And slowly, you crawled towards him into the dim twilight of the cave's entrance. You knew roughly how much light your body could handle before beginning to burn. So you stopped right before the cone of light would touch your pale white skin. In a thin, bony hand you were holding a sheathed sword. Your entire body twitching ever so slightly Despite the light not hurting your body, it was hurting your eyes. You were wearing a white, mud-covered kimono, and your long, stringy hair was covering your face, creating a small shield from the blinding light. The young slayer was sitting in. So, his voice was shaking with fear. Y you are a demon. You nodded. Don't be afraid, please, just listen. If the fact I haven't killed you yet means anything to you, you will listen. Zenitsu scratched the back of his head. He really wanted to flee and tell the core what had happened. But he needed a sword back first. To begin with, you told him your name before you began explaining. I've been turned into this for a few months now. Your voice was heavy with sadness. I was a slayer, just like you, but... Your lips quivered. Then I encountered him. I was unprepared. The boy gulped loudly. Muzan, right? He said. He knew that demons could not speak the name of the Demon King or risk being hunted down. You nodded. He was so fast. And... You really didn't want to remember your encounter with this monster. And... The blonde boy raised a hand. It's... Uh, Fine. You don't have to. Just just tell me the important bits. You sighed. I was turned. Knowing what I was now, I... Almost... I almost ended it myself, but... You shrugged. I couldn't. The thought of death is too strong. I'm too scared to do it myself. He took a deep breath and then spoke. And knowing that you require the flesh of humans as sustenance, you nodded. I thought it was the most ethical thing to do now. The guy you said in Zenitsu replied, Muzan. Yes, he left me for dead, probably not realizing I was turning. The process is very painful. Many die during it, not even becoming demons in the first place. You felt cold tears escape your eyes. I... I'm sorry, you said. I know how bloodthirsty slayers are. You sighed mournfully before placing the sword down and taking a step back. I will not stop you. Just no. I never killed anyone, except for demons. I'm not a monster. The, the people I... What I did to them, they were already dead. 
They live full, happy lives and we're already rotting. It tastes awful. And I'm still hungry after eating three of them, but... At least I can look at my own reflection and still see a shred of the person that I once was. Slowly, Zenitsu reached out his hand to grab his sword before standing up. A friend of mine, he spoke, has a sister. She is in the same situation you are in, uh, just a bit different. She is a demon. He's a slayer. And they're looking for a cure. Your head twisted towards the boy's face. Are you serious? You barked breathlessly before falling on your knees, pleading to him. <laughs> a minute ago, you said you'd want to marry me. He blushed, feeling only a slight hint of embarrassment. If you can cure this, I will gladly marry you. He was taken aback. I uh, could be an abuser, he said half jokingly. No hell can be worse than the hell I am in right now. Please. You looked up at him, your hair sliding off your face, revealing your sharp teeth, bloodshot eyes, and soft, pale skin to him. He got down on one knee and gently took one of your bony hands. The warmth of his body, making your entire body tense up. It was hard to resist the urge to bite his comforting hands, tear through his flesh, drink his blood, rip his heart out. The thought alone almost making you break out in a loud cries of anguish. I promise, for as long as I am alive, he spoke. I will look for a cure for you and all of demon kind. And I promise I will marry you for as long as you can resist the urge of killing an innocent person. He smiled softly towards you. Your teeth gnawed inside your mouth. The promise of safety and of being alive almost sounding too sweet. And his next words were even more devastatingly hopeful. My friend Tanjiro told me of a woman. Her name is Miss Tamayo. She is a doctor. And a demon, too. Find her. You can stay with her. She is taking care of defective demons like you. Tears ran down your face. As you pulled the slayer into the darkness with you. A scared shriek escaping him, that quickly turned into a pleased groan. Upon feeling your soft, yet cold lips press against his mouth, your kiss was animalistic, needy and desperate, as you felt as if when you let go of him, all these promises of security and life would vanish. He allowed it, a grinning with a pleased expression. Eventually, however, you let go of him. After your teeth dangerously scraped over his tongue, almost drawing blood. S sorry You apologized before taking a step back into the cave's darkness. You may have not been able to hold yourself back. It's fine. He said, still having this dumb grin on his face. He didn't even realize the danger he had been in just a second ago. You knew, however, if you would give in to your carnal desires, he would die without sure, and you would be lost forever. Minutes passed until you spoke up. What's your name? You asked. He chuckled and cartoonishly slapped his forehead. I totally forgot that. <laughs> I'm Zenitsu. You chuckled. That's a nice name. 
Slowly you stumbled back into your cave and leaned back against its walls. So, for how long have you been a demon? You tilted your head. A few months now. It's like nothing I have ever experienced and... A nightmare I wish no one upon. You two went quiet again until you heard her stomach rumble loudly. You're hungry, you said with an amused chuckle. I, uh, can only offer something I know you definitely don't want. He bit his lower lip. Yeah, was his only response. I'm going now, he said. Just try not to succumb to it. I'll tell the Slayer Corps that it were simple grave robbers, but for the future, please, try to be more hidden about it. At least until we figure out how to fix it, okay? He sounded so reassuring. It brought tears back into your eyes. Just remember what you promised, he said with a cheeky grin. Once we have the cure, I will find you. You chuckled. You actually chuckled. He managed to make you feel again. Yes, you said softly. He got back on his feet and turned to leave. Oh, and remember, Miss Tamayo! He shouted back into the cave before leaving you. Once he was out of sight, you closed your tired eyes. Sighing happily. Maybe there was hope after all.